Okay, so that concludes the basic overview of syslogs. Now let's get on to the uh, Cisco Security Device Manager itself. This is a screenshot and basically what I'm going over here is how to get to the point where you can configure logging parameters in the Cisco SDM. So the big red numbers next to the outline areas make it pretty easy to figure out what we're going to do here. Uh, obviously configure, click on that, that will open up a task list here. Whereas most of the tasks have an icon dedicated, you know, if you're configuring firewalls or uh, routing, yeah, you'll find something here. If you do not find it here, in this case logging, uh, go ahead and click on additional tasks. That will open up this pane here, which will have um, tasks that are not listed explicitly here. And in this case, we're going to be looking for router properties. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. That will open up the options below there. And you can see by the big red number four here, logging is about the third one down. Click on that. That will open up the screen here. Uh, this area that's uh, outlined in blue is your current syslog properties. Uh, so you can see that syslog is actually disabled. Um, logging to buffer is enabled, blah, blah, blah. We'll take a look at this a little bit later. Uh, what we're looking for here is because we're going to be because we're going to be configuring logging, we want to go ahead and click on the edit button. And one thing I want to touch on quickly before we move on is if you don't know where to find something, say that you weren't able to you know, find logging or you didn't want to just hunt and peck around in this, go ahead and use the uh, help. A lot of times as you know, IT geeks, we never touch the help files. Uh, we think we're above it, but actually uh, Cisco SDM has a very good help file and we'll see that in the uh, lab portion click on this type in uh, syslog and it will tell you where to navigate to to get to this screen once you've clicked on the edit button this screen will pop up and I told you earlier that it's really limited what you can configure in Cisco SDM as far as logging those two logging features that were in blue were logging buffered and logging host and you can see the screen is split up to tell you which portions you're going to configure we're not going to spend a lot of time on local syslog buffer settings that's the buffers on your Cisco device in this case Cisco router you enable it or disable it with this check mark. Uh, you set the logging level, which we will go over in the next slide. So this does apply to both the remote syslog server settings and the local buffer settings. And then you set the buffer size. Again, not going to go over this in detail because there is another lesson that really hits this pretty hard. So we're going to concentrate today on sending messages to a remote syslog server. And the upper half of this window is what you're going to concentrate on there. So enabling and disabling it is as easy as clicking on this check box up here. Uh, setting the logging level that's a drop down you'll be able to choose from there I'm going to go over what this means in the next slide and then of course probably the most important step is that you have to specify a uh, IP address or host name of the remote syslog server and you do that by clicking on the add button here and we'll see this all in action in just a bit so as we saw earlier logging host followed by the IP address or the host name of the remote syslog server is all you need to do to turn this on and that was in that last slide that's basically that checkbox and then specifying a remote server uh, there's a lot of additional options that you can configure with this. Unfortunately, SDM is only going to allow you to configure one additional option, and that's going to be the logging level. So what are logging levels? Basically, any syslog message is going to fall into one of eight categories, and those categories are going to range from zero to seven. There are corresponding keywords, so um, the category zero or logging level zero is also referred to as emergencies. Uh, logging level five is also referred to as notifications. I mentioned down here if you're taking a CCI, I'm sorry, I mentioned down here if you're pursuing a Cisco certification, you're going to want to memorize the logging level numerical value with its associated keyword. Uh, in real life, not that big a deal because you will see this in you'll see this on the CLI in the uh, command and you'll also see this in the SDM so that's it's right in front of you don't really need to commit that to memory but for exams yes definitely do that so as I said each syslog mess so as I said each list go from here so as I said each syslog messages go from here fuck me so as I said each syslog message gets put into a logging level category and the lower the category, the more grave it is. So like these first three here, 
emergency alerts and critical you hopefully won't see those often in your network but when they do occur you definitely want to have those captured so these are the things that will just bone up your device um, logging level 3 through 5 these are the ones you're going to see the most often especially 5 uh, if you do a shut no shut on an interface uh, depending on what interface it is you'll either get a 3 or a 5 so you want to have these four troubleshooting uh, once you run into level 6 that's your information node that is your application level um, a lot of people don't even care about these and then debugging is its own special beast it says down here that the application security logging messages require a level of information which is 6 informational rather uh, firewall logging messages require a logging level of debugging which is 7 so keep that in mind this is directly from the SDM help uh, that's something that might pop up on your exam if you're talking if you're thinking about taking the CCNA security exam in real life a lot of times people will not log these because what's going on with the debug is you're you're going to get detailed system information um, when you're troubleshooting something and it'll spit out a lot of information so a lot of times you don't want to have that go off of your device because it's just going to fill up a log. If you ever want to have fun, do not do this on a production router. Uh, let me make that very clear. Do not fuck with debugging on a production router because that can be a career-ending decision. Um, if you're in a lab, though, go ahead and try debugging and see how much output you get. You'll see that in a lot of cases you get a ton of output. Anyways, I digress. Something important to keep in mind is that when you set the logging level, what you're actually setting is you're setting the logging to that level. So in this case, let's say we wanted notifications. If I set this to notifications or five in my dropdown or on the CLI, what I'm actually going to get is I'm going to get everything up to that level. So I will get zero, one, two, three, four, five, or emergencies through notifications. So it's inclusive with the levels that are below it so if you get a question that says you know log all possible syslog messages then you know that what they're asking you to do is to set the logging level to debugging because that includes seven through zero so that's all eight levels and this is just a nice table of the same information here um, syslog definition really doesn't help us out a whole lot one thing I did want to touch on it says the default logging level varies by platform but is generally seven that's for the local syslog messages. So if you enable uh, logging buffered, you're generally going to get seven, which means all messages, including debugging. With remote syslog, um, I don't think I have a slide that has the uh, Cisco documentation here because this is SDM and I didn't, you know, we're not working on the CLI. But we'll see this actually on the CLI when we look at the default logging level. It'll actually be at six. On your local device, it will default to seven generally. Again, defend. De depends on your platform slash iOS version. When you're sending syslog messages to a remote server, uh, it's going to generally default to six. So just keep that in mind. That's that's also good uh, fodder for a test question. Okay, so here we are in the actual configuration screenshots. Not gonna spend a lot of time on this because you're gonna learn more watching the quote unquote lab portion of this video where I'll actually walk through the configuration with a syslog server but you could see you choose your logging level here and it's got the numbers and the keywords and then uh, it's behind here you click on add to add an IP address or host name generally use an IP address but whatever works for you and then you click OK 